Okay, calcium homeostasis. Um, this is going to involve feedback loops and the endocrine system, so I'm going to love it. Um, hope you do too. So let's first talk just briefly about why calcium is so important. When I say calcium, I'm talking about levels in the blood, so in the plasma of the blood. Um, this is a homeostatic variable, so it needs to be maintained within a certain range because calcium is so important in many physiological processes. We'll see this throughout the semester. So we'll see it with um, synaptic release of neurotransmitters, with muscle contraction, and it's also important for cell signaling, and many other things. Those are some that we'll see um, in this class. So we need to regulate it, okay? Um, how do we regulate it? Well, we've got three effector or target organs that can help with this. One, probably shouldn't be surprising, is going to be the bone. So um, the bone down here, obviously the focus of this week, these are osteoblasts. So what do osteoblasts do? they form new bone matrix. And then calcium is going to be deposited into that matrix. Um, osteoclasts break down bone. This is going to release calcium into the blood. This is going to uptake calcium. Okay, so those are the two obviously connect to the um, system we're talking about today. So I'm gonna add in the arrows, we can regulate um, the blood, both inputting or outputting calcium via the bone. The intestines can also increase their absorption of calcium. Which would thus increase the amount in the plasma, taking in more from the diet. And lastly, the kidney's intestine. Bone and kidney. Lastly, the kidney. Um, Calcium can either be lost or retained in the urine. So excreted in the urine or what's called reabsorbed. So that's retained in the body. Okay. What are these three organs that this learning check is talking about? The three organs mentioned here. Um, and then we're also going to, probably not surprisingly, identify the other components of the feedback loop, of a feedback loop. Okay. Endocrine regulation of homeostasis means that the receptor and integrator are going to be the same organ. This is an anterior view of the trachea. Here is the thyroid gland. So you saw the thyroid gland in um, the rat. But I want to flip this and look at the backside right now. So if we look at the backside of the thyroid, posterior view here, we can still see the thyroid gland. And we also can see the parathyroid gland, four little glands that make up the parathyroid. The parathyroid is our receptor and integrator for low plasma calcium. We'll see things for when calcium gets high, it's, it's different. So it's going to detect low calcium in the plasma and decide whether or not to send a signal to 
those effector organs we saw previously. So for example, the bone. These, this is just a histology section of the cells. The, thi uh, the parathyroid has pretty much um, these parathyroid cells that are going to release parathyroid hormone, PTH. That is the output signal. It's going to travel to the bloodstream because it's a hormone and target intestines, kidneys, and bone. Really great example of why we'd want a um, endocrine signal in that case to target all three and have them all respond. So let's draw this out. Maybe you could do this um, with me or before I do it. So let me get, okay, there we go. So we've got our stimulus is right there, actually. Let's, let's just put this whole thing in a box. Our stimulus is low calcium. Hypocalcemia is low calcium. Um, this is going to be detected by the parathyroid gland. This is going to be both our sensor slash receptor and our integrator which is the same thing as a control center. Remember control centers can either be endocrine or nervous system. In this case, it is endocrine. So we've got an arrow there. Um, this parathyroid gland is going to have an output signal, PTH. Let me redo that. Our output, which is going to target One, osteoclasts. Two, kidneys. Three, intestines. These are three separate target, which is also called an effector. It's the thing's actually going to have the effect, have the response. Could probably call it a responder. So we're going to release calcium by bone breakdown. We're going to reabsorb calcium and we're going to absorb calcium. These are the responses. And you could draw out this um, pathway with either one of these three organs separately as well. Regardless, these are all working to increase calcium. So that's counteracting our stimulus, turning off the pathway, negative feedback, right? review of that part. Okay. For high calcium, the thyroid gland is the sensor and integrator. Remember the thyroid gland is, um, is here. The parathyroid was located on it. So for hypercalcemia, um, here's just histology of the thyroid gland. It's actually these um, very few cells, parafollicular they're called, that um, produce a hormone called calcitonin. Somewhat appropriate name. Calcitonin responds to high calcium. Um, I just have this to point out, if you've heard of thyroid hormones, um, like T3 and T4, those are different than calcitonin. So those would be produced by um, the follicle and colloid cells, T3 and T4. Not what we're talking about right now. Calcitonin um, is produced in smaller amounts, and it's what responds to high calcium. 
T3 and T4 do other stuff related to metabolism. So I think you've got the information you need that you could do this. Diagram the response to high plasma calcium, right? High calcium. Um, and just do the bone. What's going to respond in the bone? 